Good evening, friends, fiends, and night owl supremes. Welcome to A Bit Late. I hope you're having a wonderful evening or day whenever you're listening to this, and that you're in the mood for a story that uh, twists and turns sometimes again within the same sentence. It's beautiful, I promise. It's a lovely story. Tonight's story is The Lady and the Lion, which seems very much like Beauty and the Beast at first, and then morphs sort of into the East of Sun, West of Moon adventure. It's quite a good tale, quite a confusing tale, quite a frustrating tale, of course, of course. But hey, you know what? It's fun, it's a fairy tale, and it'll help you get your mind off of things or inspire you to think of different things. Cool? Cool. So, gather around you your pillows, your blankets, put your tea on the boil, light your candles, your fairy lights, and summon your animal familiars. Get comfy and cozy for tonight's fairy tale, The Lady and the Lion. There was once a man who had to take a long journey, and when he was saying goodbye to his daughters, he asked what he should bring back to them. The eldest wanted pearls, the second diamonds, but the third said, Dear father, I should like a singing, soaring lark. <laughs> Super Beauty and the Beast vibes. Super Cinderella vibes. Hmm... The youngest wants nothing as extravagant as the elder too. The father said, Very well, if I can manage it, you shall have it. Although a lark sounds a lot trickier to procure. And he kissed all three and set off. He bought pearls and diamonds for the two eldest, but he had searched everywhere in vain for the singing, soaring lark, and this worried him. For his youngest daughter was his favorite child. <laughs> surprise, surprise! Wow, this is an old hat for fairy tale lovers. It's also why I appreciate Howl's Moving Castle. Sophie is the oldest, and out to seek her fortune, even though she knows... Anyway, I'm not going to go into Howl's Moving Castle. Definitely a book to check out, though. Anyway, once his way led through a wood, in the midst of which was a splendid castle, near it stood a tree. And right up at the top of the tree, he saw a lark singing and soaring. Aha, uh -huh, he said. I have come across you in the nick of time. And he called to his servant to dismount and catch the little creature. But as he approached the tree, a lion sprang out from underneath and shook himself and roared so that the leaves on the tree trembled. Who dares to steal my lark, said he. I will eat up the thief. The man said, I didn't know the bird was yours. I will make up for my fault by paying a heavy ransom. Only spare my life. But the lion said, Nothing can save you unless you promise to give me whatever first meets you when you get home. If you consent, I will give you your life and the bird in the bargain. But the man hesitated and said, Suppose my youngest and favorite daughter were to come running to meet me when I get home. Suppose that indeed, father, like, don't tell the lion that. But the servant was afraid. Your daughter will not necessarily be the first to come to meet you. It might just as well be a cat or dog. Still not great, but okay. So the man let himself be persuaded, took the lark, and promised to the lion for his own whatever first met him on his return home. I wonder what it could be. Wait, we don't have to wait long. Here it is. When he reached home and entered his house, the first person who met him was none other than his youngest daughter. Ah, oh, surprise! She came running up and kissed and caressed him, and when she saw that he had brought the singing, soaring lark, she was beside herself with joy. But her father could not rejoice. He began to cry and said, My dear child, it has cost me dear, for I have had to promise you to a lion who will tear you to pieces when he has you in his power. And he told her all that had happened and begged her not to go, come what might. Yeah, sure, just don't honor your bargain with a lion for a little bird. But she consoled him, saying, Dear father, what you have promised must be performed. I will go and will go soon to soften the lion's heart so that I shall come back safe and sound. The next morning, the way was shown to her. How? By whom? Interesting, I want to know that. And she said goodbye and went confidently into the forest. Good for you, little lady. Now the lion was an enchanted prince. Oh, wow, big surprise. No. Who was a lion by day, and all his followers were lions too. 
but by night they reassumed their human forms. On her arrival, she was kindly received and conducted to the castle. When night fell, the lion turned into a handsome man, and their wedding was celebrated. Whoa, yeah, that, that happened. When night fell, the lion was turned into a handsome man, and their wedding was celebrated with due magnificence. Didn't realize that's what we were getting into here, right? She thought she was going to be torn to pieces. Instead, she's marrying him. This is exactly what happens in many of the Beauty and the Beast tales. I mean, not the marriage right away. That's like months and months of a delay, of course. But, huh, <laughs> that story changed whiplashingly fast within the same sentence. Cool. So they had a cool wedding and they lived happily together, sitting up at night and sleeping by day. That's familiar. The opposite sleep schedule is familiar, not the and married to a lion familiar part? What? One day he came to her and said, Tomorrow there is a festival at your father's house to celebrate your eldest sister's wedding. If you would like to go, my lion shall escort you. Oh, wow. Her family probably doesn't even know she's married yet. She had to do that all alone. She answered that she was very eager to see her father again, so she went away accompanied by the lions. And there's a really cool picture in the book where there's a woman followed by all these lions and it makes me think of the tarot card strength so i'm wondering if this type of story fed into that sort of depiction on the card that is pretty common and where that started that's pretty neat anyway she's in the lion parade there was great rejoicing on her coming for they all thought that she had been torn to pieces and had long been dead <laughs> as you would assume but she told them what a handsome husband she had and how she well fared. And she stayed with them as long as the wedding festivities lasted. Then she went back into the wood again. When the second daughter married, the youngest was again invited to the wedding. She said to the lion, This time I will not go alone. You must come too. Oh no, I hope he's okay. But the lion said it would be too dangerous, for if a gleam of light touched him, he would be changed into a dove and would have to fly about for seven years. Whoa. So the forest is perpetually dark? I mean, that is possible maybe with a thick tree canopy, but... What? Okay. Sure, buddy. That's... that's a bummer. <laughs> Aww. Ah, she said, only go with me and I will protect you and keep every ray of light off of you. <laughs> that's, that's an interesting task. So they went away together and took their little child with them too. Oh, they have a baby. Did not know, now we do. They had a hall built with such thick walls that no ray could penetrate. And they built a house very quickly. And the the lion was to retire when the wedding torches were kindled. So he can't even be in any light. But the door was made of fresh wood which split and caused a little crack which no one noticed. Oh no. Construction 101, don't build lightproof houses with fresh wood doors. Now you know. Now I know. Now the wedding was celebrated with great splendor, but when the procession came back from the church with a large number of torches and lights, a ray no broader than a hair fell upon the prince, and the minute this ray touched him, he was changed. And when his wife came in and looked at him, she saw nothing but the white dove sitting there. The dove said to her, For seven years I must fly around the world. Every seventh step I will let fall a drop of blood and a white feather which will show you the way. And if you will follow the track, you can free me. Oh, that sounds like a miserable sad time. Thereupon, the dove flew out of the door and she followed it, and every seventh step it let fall a drop of blood and a little white feather to show her the way. So she wandered about the world and never rested till the seven years were nearly past. Did she leave her kid? Does she have the kid? Then she rejoiced, thinking that she would soon be free of her troubles, but she was still far from release. One day, as they were journeying on in the accustomed way, the feather and the drop of blood ceased falling, and when she looked up, the dove had vanished. Man cannot help me, she thought, so she lifted up to the sun and said, You shine upon all the valleys and mountain peaks. Have you not seen a white dove flying by? No, said the sun. 
I have not seen one, but I will give you a little casket, creepy. Open it when you are in dire need. She thanked the sun and went on till night when the moon shone out. You shine all night, she said. Over field and forest, have you seen a white dove flying by? No, answered the moon. I have seen none, but here is an egg. Break it when you are in great need. <laughs> I love celestial gifts. They make so much sense. Later on in the story. She thanked the moon and went on till the night wind blew upon her. You blow among all the trees and leaves. Have you not seen a white dove? She asked. No, said the night wind. I have not seen one, but I will ask the other three winds who may, perhaps, have seen it. The east wind and the west wind came, but they had seen no dove. Only the south wind said, I have seen the white dove. It has flown away to the Red Sea where it has again become a lion. Since the seven years are over and the lion is ever fighting with the dragon, who is an enchanted princess? What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is he fighting in broad daylight? Wouldn't that just turn him back into a dove? Or was that a one-time thing? A one-time event in the code? <sighs> and an enchanted dragon princess? That sounds amazing. Absolutely amazing. The night wind said, I will advise you. Go to the Red Sea and you will find tall reeds growing on the right bank. Count them and cut down the eleventh. Strike the dragon with it and then the lion will be able to master it and both will regain human shape. Next, look round and you will see the winged griffin who dwells by the Red Sea. Leap upon its back with your beloved and it will carry you across the sea. Here is a nut. Yes, celestial and ephemeral being gifts. Drop it when you come to mid-ocean. It will open immediately and a tall tree nut will grow up out of the water, on which the griffin will settle. Could it not rest, it would not be strong enough to carry you across. If you forget to drop the nut, it will let you fall into the sea. It's a lot of information in a short amount of time. It's game changing. Then she journeyed on and found everything as the night wind had said. She counted the reeds by the sea and cut off the eleventh, struck the dragon with it, and the lion mastered it. Immediately, they both regained human form. But when the princess, who had been a dragon, was freed from the enchantment, she took the prince in her arms, seated herself upon the griffin's back, and carried him off. <gasps> oh no, of course she did. That stinks. And the poor wanderer, forsaken again, sat down and cried. At last she took courage and said to herself, Wherever the wind blows, I will go. As long as the cocks crow, I will search till I find him. This is really poor luck, man. I mean, lady. So she went on a long, long way till she came to the castle where the prince and princess were living. In a lot of stories like this, the prince is scooped up by another princess and he doesn't really try to get away. He's just like, I guess this is life now. Or not even hold up by a princess, just he has a new place to live and he just stays there until his beloved rescues him. But really it's just like reminding him that she exists. Like, hey, I crossed the seven realms for you. I wore these heavy shoes and you're just going to sit and live in this tree? I mean, or with this new princess? What's wrong with me, man? What about our kid? Ah, <sighs> fairy tales bring out a lot of thoughts. Anyway, the prince and princess are living in a castle together. There she heard that there was to be a festival celebrating their wedding. <laughs> yeah, see, it's no problem getting married to a new woman. Then she said to herself, Heaven help me. She opened the casket which the sun had given her. Inside it was a dress as brilliant as the sun itself. She took it out, put it on, and went into the castle where everyone, including the bride, looked at her with amazement. The dress pleased the bride so much that she asked if it was to be bought. Her husband doesn't recognize her in this dress. Come on now. Anyway, the dress cannot be bought. Not with gold or goods, she answered, but with flesh and blood. I like her. The bride asked what she meant, and she answered, Let me speak with the bridegroom in his chamber tonight. 
aka my husband. The bride refused. However, she wanted the dress so much that at last she consented. <laughs> to the scandalous thing, I'm sure. But the chamberlain was ordered to give the prince a sleeping draught. That night, when the prince was asleep, she was taken to his room. She sat down and said, For seven years I have followed you. I have been to the sun and the moon and the four winds to look for you. I have helped you against the dragon, and now you would quite forget me? Right? But the prince slept so soundly that he thought it was only the rustling of the wind among the pine trees. When morning came, she was taken away and had to give up the dress. And as it had not helped her, she was very sad and went out to the meadow and cried. As she was sitting there, she remembered the egg which the moon had given her. She broke it open and out came a hen and twelve chickens, all, all of gold, who ran about chirping and then crept back under their mother's wings. That's adorable. A prettier sight could not be seen. She got up and drove them about the meadow till the bride saw them from the window. The chickens pleased her so much that she asked if they were for sale. Not for gold or goods, but for flesh and blood. Hold up. Flesh and blood, does, that doesn't mean just visiting the prince. That sounds a lot more involved. But let me speak with the bridegroom in his chamber once more. The bride said, yes, intending to deceive her as before. But when the prince went to his room, he asked the chamberlain what all the murmuring and rustling in the night meant. Then the chamberlain told him how he had been ordered to give him a sleeping draught because a poor girl had been concealed in his room. <laughs> this chamberlain is a terrible liar, or he's easily shaken up. And that night he was to do the same again. Pour out the drink and put it near my bed, said the prince, or just don't give it to me. That night she was brought in again, and when she began to relate her sad fortunes, he recognized the voice of his dear wife, thank God sprang up and said, Now I am really free for the first time. All has been a dream, not for her, for the foreign princess cast a spell over me so that I was forced to forget you, how convenient. But heaven in a happy hour has taken away my blindness. <laughs> I love fairy tales so much. Then they both stole out of the castle, for they feared the princess's father. Oh no, not dad, because he was a sorcerer. Oh, buddy. Yeah, fear him. They mounted the griffin who bore them over the Red Sea, and when they got to the mid-ocean, she dropped the nut. On the spot, a fine nut tree sprang up on which the bird rested. Then it took them home, where they found their child grown tall and beautiful, and they lived happily ever after till the end. The end. I am so happy that their child is alive and presumably well taken care of. <laughs> they didn't have to raise that child at all. Now they're a happy family. Um, I'm sure that was an awkward reunion though. Um, hey mom, you know, I was like a baby. Where, where have you been for seven plus years? Oh, I was chasing a white dove that was slash a lion and your father, but then he was going to be married again, even though we're married and it's a long story, sweetie. Yeah, yeah you think? It's amazing. I hope you enjoyed the story as much as I did reading it. I, I do love stories that twist and turn within a sentence. They keep you on your toes, and your fairy tale logic has to be strong. But yeah, this story was The Lady and the Lion. It was a charming little tale full of enchantments and sorcerers. Not really, but pretty much in the vein of East of Sun, West of Moon, or The Enchanted Pig, or any of those stories where the heroine has to go over the whole world to find the man she's married to, essentially. So, let me know what you think in the comments below, and let's make it fun. What is a celestial gift from the sun or the moon that you just know if you were in a story, you would be given? You're like, wow, thanks for the walnut, or hey, cool apple. It's just some random thing, because I feel like they do have meaning, but after so many translations, it gets lost, and it just gets really fun. Anyway, I hope you're having a wonderful evening and are relaxed or into what you're doing. But now, off to sleep and dream what you will or stay a while and enjoy another tale. Whichever you choose, I'll speak to you again. And until then, stay spooky, my friends. Good night.